What's up guys, Thirst Cousin here. In this video, we review honestly the best app that I've ever reviewed on this channel. This is an app that follows all of the React best practices, all of code best practices in general. The code is clean, concise, and easy to work with. And honestly, I think you're going to learn so much from this video. So if I were you, I would watch this and I would watch this until the end. Also, by the way, if you still haven't joined the Discord, honestly, you are missing out. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's the first link in the description. Cool. So this is the app that we're going to be reviewing today. It's an app called Social Echo, and it's basically a social media that looks and feels a lot like Facebook, right? Like this is what Facebook looked like in the early days when it was around. You have your home feed here with a bunch of posts. You can like a post. You can comment on posts. You have your own profile, which shows you all of the things about yourself, right? You can edit your profile. This is a fully functional, basic social media application. This is what the code for this looks like. So it's a mono repo, which means that you have the client and the server in the same repository. For this review, we're only going to be looking at the client because this is where all of the React code lives. The first file that I want to look at is inside of SRC and then pages. Pages, as you can probably tell, holds all of the main pages of the application, like our home screen, our profile and others. And I want to look at this home screen right here. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is that this component is really really small. It's only 14 lines of code, which is a good thing. This is what you want. This is a component that does only one thing, which is gets the user data from the Redux store. This is using Redux as its state management solution, and then passes it to this main section component. This is what you want. It's a clean, simple component that does only one thing. If I then open the main section component, you're going to see that it follows a very similar pattern. Let me just close the navigator here. This component is also very short. It's 85 lines of code, which is really nothing for a whole component that renders the entire home screen. Remember, this is the component that renders all of this that you're seeing here in the home. All of these posts here and all of this functionality is rendered in this one component with only 85 lines of code. Now this component, this main section component also does very simple things. It first of all fetches data using this dispatch function here. Actually in this use effect here, we have this effect that fires a dispatch, which is basically Redux saying that, hey, I want you to do something. It's firing an action. And the action that it's firing is this get post action. This get post action, if I open this, it's a simple action that fires an API call to get the post and then handles the error. And then if it has a successful response, it will dispatch patch another action of type get post success, which is going to update the Redux state with this payload here. Now, here's something really cool about get posts action. I want you to focus here at what it actually calls. It calls this API dot get posts. If I go to the definition of get posts, this is its own function that fetches the posts and it uses this main API object, which we're going to get to in just a second. But the fact is that this is a function that is extracted outside of any component, which means that you can easily reuse it anywhere and not have to worry about rewriting all of this logic here. And this uppercase API object is also just an Axios object that's using Axios.create. And this is really good because you can provide some configuration that is common to all of your API requests. For example, this base URL. Notice here that we have the admin API, we have the community API, right? Whenever you want to call the admin API, you just use this object. When you want to call the community API, you use this object. The base URL is going to be configured automatically and you never have to worry about it yourself. And then even better, if you have to work with authentication and access tokens, we have this auth interceptor here, which is really, really great. It basically gets the access token from the local storage, and then it intercepts here, we have this request here as a parameter, it adds it to the headers of this request. And we're using it here at the bottom by saying that API dot interceptors dot request dot use and we're injecting this interceptor in our actual API, which means that in our app, we never have to worry about passing and getting and handling the access token of the user to then pass to our API. Just think about the amount of code that is saved doing it this way, because this is automatic. Another great thing about this component and this pattern is the great use of use memo. Basically, if you look here, we have memoized post, which is wrapped in use memo, and this is going to return a map of all the posts which render this memoized post component. This memoized post component is memoed here at the top of the file. We have memoized post equals memo post, which means that this component is not going to be render unless any of its props are explicitly different. When this is used in combination with this use memo here, this is going to make it so that this memoized post is only ever going to re-render when post is different, which is exactly what you want. It's a performance optimization. And this memoized post is only going to re-render when its post is different.
different, right? So this way you make sure that only when you change something to the actual post will it re-render. Cool, so let's move on to another file. We're gonna look at profile.jsx. Now this, again, it's a very small component. It's 14 lines of code, which is really great. We can kind of see a pattern developing here. And it's again, getting this user data from the Redux store and passing it to this user profile component. The user profile component, again, is a really small component. It's only 67 lines of code, which is really, really great. This makes it really easy to understand and work with. And it's essentially doing one thing. It's just fetching the user through this use effect. Again, the same patterns, dispatching an action using the get user action, which then uses the API of get user, and then is going to return the data and set loading to false. That's it. That's all that you need. Now, the only thing that I've noticed in this component here, which is kind of different from the other component, is that we have this memoized post on profile here, which is the same pattern as we memoized our component before, but it's put inside of this component. So what I would do instead is I would just put this outside because for one, it's going to match the pattern that we had before. And also, if you put it here inside of this component, you're invalidating the memo of this, right? And I'm not sure why this was done differently in this component, because in the previous component in home, this was done correctly. Also, some Something else that I noticed that I don't quite understand why this was done this way, but you don't need to have led here for post to show. Maybe this was forgotten because of development or whatever, but if you look at where post to show is being used, right, it's being used here, 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 and here, it's not actually being reassigned anywhere, so there's no need to have let. You can just do const instead. So we can do const, and then I'm just going to put this here because again, we don't need to reassign this variable, and this will be exactly in the same way. Now there's one other thing. There's no use memo here, which is really weird because you have this memoized post on profile thing, which we've now put at the top of the component, but we're not using use memo, which essentially will invalidate the memo that's happening here. So you wanna come here and do use memo, open a parentheses, open the inner arrow function, do it like so, and then here just do parentheses, comma, empty dependency, and this is going to be dependent on the posts. And doing it this way, you've now introduced memo in your post, which is what you ideally wanted. I'm not, again, I'm not sure why this happened this way. And then you're making good use of this memoized post on profile because now your memo is going to work properly. Then here, a little bit more towards the bottom, I wanna look at two things really quickly because I find these really, really great and that is the own profile card, which is a separate component, which is really good to see. This one is a modal. It handles its own state for opening and closing the modal with these functions here. And then it renders all of the functionality for actually handling the modal, which is great. You want to have this in a separate component. Then also we have this own info card, which has no state. It's purely UI. It's just a bunch of divs and other HTML elements. And I see a lot of developers who would put this in this main user profile component and just bloat the whole thing. You don't want to do this, even if it's just UI, even if it's just a little bit of HTML and CSS and Tailwind in this case, you want to extract it in a separate component because then again, this component is 49 lines of code. It makes it really easy to work with. And if you only need to do something in this own info card component, you can just come here, make the changes and not even touch user profile. Cool, let's move on. Now, the last thing that I want to look at for this video is this app container file here and the whole Redux setup of this application. As you've seen, we're using Redux in this application and Redux is a very big part of the application. So it's worth it to look at how everything is set up. First, let's start with app container, which is basically a component that wraps the entire application as the name obviously implies. And what this does here, basically it has this use effect that first checks for the server status, right? You want to make sure that the server is online before actually rendering anything out, which is really great. But one thing that I noticed is that this only happens once. This only runs once on mount because this is an empty dependency array which I don't think is what you actually want to do. Because right, sure, it's good to check that the server status is online initially before doing anything else, but what happens if it's been 30 seconds or a minute or an hour, and then the server goes down? Doing it this way, you're not gonna know if the server goes down, and then you might run into problems in your application and your user is not gonna know what's happening. So what I would do instead is I would make this check maybe every 30 seconds, kind of like a polling mechanism to just always make sure that the application is online. And if ever the application goes down, the server goes down, for any reason, you can immediately alert your user. And this is, in my opinion, a better user experience. Then the next effect here at the bottom is the one that creates and injects the app store, the Redux store in the entire application. So we have this load store function here, which basically creates the app store from Redux. This is basically a helper function that runs some things with the access token and then checks if the token is valid. And then it runs this configure function, which comes default from Redux. Then going back to our app container file, we have this app store variable 
variable here, which got created by create app store, it's getting set in the state. And this is getting passed directly to this provider here, which comes from react redux as the store. So we have the provider here at the top from react redux, and this is getting the store injected, which means that we'll have access to this store in any component under this. And that's it really, honestly, this application is great. It is the best application that I've seen so far submitted to me. And honestly, this is kind of the standard of how you want to build your own applications. The folder structure is correct. The code is correct. Everything is following best practices. And this is a great model for how you can build your own applications. Cool. So there you go. That was the app review for Social Echo. If you've enjoyed this video, you can make sure to subscribe right here. You can also check out this video here, which I'm sure is super awesome because I made it obviously. If you still haven't joined the Discord, honestly, what are you doing? It's the best resource. If you're looking to learn React, if you're interested in React, I would highly, highly recommend that you go and check it out. It's the first link in the description down below. Check it out. With that being said, my name has been Darius Kazan. This is Kazan Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.